Hi, it's Lonnie with Crafty Traveler and I am in here in Hamilton, Missouri, standing in front of the Missouri Quilt Museum. Wait till you see this place. It is fabulous. down a street a couple of blocks to the quilt museum and to see the largest spool of thread. Look at all the beautiful flowers. Here's another view of those flowers and there's a little kitty cat in the garden too. Actually this is someone's residence because the quilt museum is over there. largest spool of thread, 22 feet tall, 8 feet wide, began in 2018 with 1 million yards of thread. Visitors are encouraged to add your thread. The largest spool of thread, sponsored by Aurifil, and this is the Quilt Museum. It's going to cost me $12 to get in, but I bet it's worth it. I'm going to do it. This is the gift shop inside the museum. They have many cute gifts. They have seam rippers and pens and quilts and uh, little houses for decoration and some t-shirts and I'm getting this turquoise one. It's in my size. Here's a beautiful pineapple quilt, and below it there are thimbles, and we'll talk about thimbles later in the video. Look at all these little bitty sewing machines, children's sewing machines, and bigger sewing machines, too. This green box is a box for a white featherweight. Featherweights that are light green in color used to be white. The box they were in cause them to discolor. I have one of my own. any of the signatures on this quilt. They are from celebrities. I'm not sure of the story behind this. I'll have to wait to ask the young lady. Liberace. I have his signature. I treated Liberace's mother. Ronald Reagan is down there. huge thimble collection and I understand they're looking for more. So anybody that has thimbles, 
send them to the quilt museum. I'll put the information below. 3D butterflies. This room is uh, full of quilts of butterflies or made with butterfly fabric. with butterfly fabric. There's butterflies in it. Oh, and it's quilted with butterflies. This might be a good time just to give you a little reminder to please click that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the video. This is Dakota, and she's the manager curator of the Missouri Quilt Museum in Hamilton, Missouri. Hi, Dakota. Hello. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to ask you about the building. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the building. So this was Hamilton High School, built in 1903. It had a fire in the late teens and then was reconstructed. And so just over 102 years, it has been um, here since the reconstruction. And it was up in high school up until the 50s and then became an elementary school and was used until about 13 years ago. Fabulous. So we were able to purchase it two years or three years ago and uh, decided to do the Missouri Quilt Museum in, in this so fabulous building. The, the Quilt Museum has been here for three years now. So we just reopened two weeks ago. We were only open for about six months prior to COVID, but we've refinished a lot, done phase two, phase three, and phase four. Um, during COVID and so now we're back and have a lot of the building finished and ready for people to view. I'm so glad. Now we are in the room that is uh, part of their Underground Railroad display and Dakota is going to talk specifically about the quilt that she's standing in front of and go for it. Oh, wonderful. So this quilt is an amazing quilt that is from the 1840s. We are so delighted to have it here in the museum. Um, the provenance that came with this quilt is that, that it was owned by African American slaves in Mississippi. And they used the coffee grounds to dye this fabric, um, which is muslin, and then they dyed that with the leftover coffee grounds um, from the, each morning. 
And then, of course, um, the, it's all hand applique and hand pieced and hand quilted. Just a stunning piece that is deteriorating. We can see lots of places where it has been repaired, but we are so glad that we can get it here in the museum and be able to preserve it from here on out. Fabulous. Now, you were telling me about something about um, justifying the Underground Railroad. Could you explain yeah, that? So the Underground Railroad, obviously, um, Harriet Tubman worked on the Underground Railroad and helped people escape slavery, which is just absolutely an amazing part of American history. Um, Quilts of the Underground Railroad is a story that has been passed from year to year to year, and it's something that we tell it like it is an oral history. And oral history is hard because that's all that we have is what they told each other. But we're talking about people that didn't, couldn't write it down because it was underground, so they didn't want people to know what was happening, but also a lot of the people that were involved in the Underground Railroad didn't read and write. And so um, oral history is an important part of American history and it gets passed from person to person. So the oral history of the quilts of the Underground Railroad is that the quilt blocks or the quilts themselves were used as directions or information for those that were escaping slavery. And so the quilts would be hung over fences, they would be put in windows, they would be um, hung out to dry, but each of those were to give signs or symbols to those that were traveling to give them information as to where to go. So a few of the things that they used for that were um, specifically like the bear paw block. The bear paw block would be get to the mountains, follow the trail of the bear. Um, the log cabin block, which would be like a safe house. Things that would speak to them and let them know where they were headed and what they're doing. This is the bow tie block here that we recognize today. And this would be kind of like dress the part or make sure that you are to be not recognized as a slave in this area. Um, so there is a little bit with historians where they are unsure if the quilts of the Underground Railroad actually existed. I believe that they did. One of the hang-ups or one of the bigger hang-ups of that is the log cabin block itself in that we need to be able to verify the dates of when each of these blocks was created and did they exist during this time period. So I'm going to work tirelessly to make sure that we can solve this mystery and lots of other quilt historians, which I am not, I'm just lover of quilts and history, but not a historian. Um, I want to make sure that we can prove this oral history um, by dating quilts back to this time period and, um, and finding anywhere that anyone has written anything down about quilts of the Underground Railroad. Great, thank you. One other question I've read and I've seen you have a lot of thimbles. You have a big thimble collection and I read something that you want more. Yes, tell me, in. we would love your thimbles. We would love any donation to the museum. Uh, we accept quilts, we accept notions, we accept sewing machines, but the group RV Quilters on Facebook, there's over 25,000 strong, have been collecting our, uh, thimbles all across the nation and the world and sending them into the museum. So we have over 6,000 uh, thimbles that have been donated so far. We're looking to get the world record on the most thimbles, which right now is 8,003. So keep sending them in so we can beat that record and also have all the thimbles to display here at the museum. And I'll put all the information in my description below so you'll know where to send them and how to contact Fantastic. Dakota. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dakota. This was very interesting. And thank you for being on Crafty Traveler channel. We appreciate you coming to visit us okay. here in Hamilton. Thank you. What'd you think of that? Now, I'm sorry I didn't go to the downstairs, but my knees were hurting. But Dakota, the manager curator, gave me a wonderful interview. They are looking for more thimbles to get the world's record on thimbles. So send in your thimbles. I'll put the information below. Missouri Quilt Museum. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Please comment, share, and subscribe. And stay crafty when visiting the Missouri Quilt Museum. Thanks for watching. You won't want to miss the next video when my friend Carol and I go into Hamilton, Missouri and shop until we drop, seeing all the lovely fabrics and all the stores and a few surprises. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Stay crafty.